What's up, everybody? I'm Jackson. I'm Kenny. And we are GK, GK Builders. Builders. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe to see all future LEGO content? If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, it helps out the channel a lot. It's very much appreciated. Also, if you could hit the bell notification, it'll let you know anytime we post a brand new video. Today's a very special day. We're doing a review of a set that I have been wanting to do a review on for a very long time. I waited a long time to get it. Um, finally, I took the plunge and I bought it. It is the fourth biggest set in the world, the first biggest Lego Star Wars set in the world. It is the UCS Millennium Falcon. Jax, why don't you break down this box for us? Well, it's 16 plus, the item number is 75192, and um, it doesn't say the piece count. Do you know why it doesn't say the piece count? Why? I ordered this from Europe. Yeah, I didn't. So it doesn't have the piece count. This has 7,512 pieces, I believe. 7,500 pieces. Humongous set. So, super cool box. It's flying through the clouds of a planet. It looks like maybe this is uh, Cloud City, because you got the whole Bespin scene back there. You got a couple of TIE Fighters chasing it. Really cool background. Obviously, it's a humongous box. On the side of it, you have the dimensions. It is about 60 centimeters wide by about 83 centimeters long. It's only in centimeters because it is European, um, so I don't have it in inches, but it's about 22 centimeters tall. Um, it comes with all these different minifigures. Jackson, you want to tell us about those? So it comes with BB-8, Han Solo, uh, Chewbacca, Finn, Rey, C-3PO, um, another Han Solo, Princess Leia, and two Porks. Cool. So on the back of the box, it gives you another view of the Millennium Falcon. It breaks down a whole bunch of different scenes from the ship. It shows you that you can swap out the satellite dishes for either the uh, original series or the sequels, uh, Episode 7. Um, and uh, shows you some of the places that open up, the play features on the inside of the ship, and that's about it, but pretty cool. This side has uh, nothing because I've closed it up. Um, if you actually look at it, it is just another image of the ship. It says Ultimate Collector Series. It is a UCS set. Um, we actually, when we did our unboxing of this a few weeks ago, we opened up the wrong side. Yeah. So we are going to give you the experience of opening up the proper side, which okay. is this one. We opened the side. It actually has little stickers that say no razor blade, um, which I questioned that when we did it, and I didn't think to look at the other side. So this one has a razor blade with a green circle around it, meaning that this is the side you open. When you open it for real. <laughs> for real? You see this little uh, drawing of the Millennium Falcon, which is kind of cool. It says Ultimate Collector Series, Star Wars Lego. And you open this one up, you get another picture of the Millennium Falcon shooting up into space. And then when you open it, you actually see the instruction book. So mine actually came a little bit beat up, which I was kind of bummed about. But the instruction book is right here. Um, so you pull that out. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, but it does have this little thing that the instruction book goes into. Uh, protect it which is nice um, and then you have the boxes which actually make another drawing of the Millennium Falcon lined up um, which is kind of cool so you pull those out and one by one you build the set so that is pretty much the experience of the actual unboxing let's check out the instruction book here's the instruction book so one thing about this uh, instruction book is it's humongous first I want to kind of yeah. look at the size yeah. like this is big it's on a binder uh, like a ring binder, which is always a sign that it is you're dealing with a humongous set. Um, again, you get a picture of the Millennium Falcon here on the cover. It is a different picture because you have Death Star 2 back here in the background, a couple of TIE Fighters in the distance. Uh, mine did come a little beat up, like I said. There was a little bit of damage when I got it. Um, I did ship it over from Europe, so it's to be expected that it's going to come with a slight bit of damage, but I did get a really good deal on this set, so I can't complain too much. Uh, like Jackson was talking about on the first page, it does have the info about the design team. Uh, there's lots of little tidbits of information in here. It gives you some info about the Millennium Falcon itself. Uh, it gives you some drawings and renderings of the ship, some of the design drawings, which are pretty cool. Um, obviously, you can uh, look at these further when you build it yourself, or you can pause the image and look at them uh, here as well. Um, <clears throat> gives you some of the facts and specifications of the ship. Um, building behind the scenes, Millennium Falcon, so it talks about the movie and how they kind of created the ship. Uh, turn the page here, you have more about the history of the Millennium Falcon. Some really cool info, I would highly recommend checking this out if you get this set and build it. Uh, we won't go into too much detail. It gives you history of the Lego Millennium Falcon, so you can see where we started. This one <laughs> does kind of not funny. look good. Um, and 2003, you got that one there. Then you had the original UCS Millennium Falcon um, in 2007. You had the MIDI scale. Um, you had another edition there, another one there, another one there. 
Uh, we did also have the two back there. So we have the solo one as well as the episode uh, nine Millennium Falcon, I believe is what that one is. Uh, we can take a look at those in a second, kind of compare. Uh, but yeah, just more about the uh, model designer and the process of designing this set. The graphic designer. Um, obviously, it came with uh, stickers and the different characters, the minifigs. More cool artwork. Uh, again, really cool artwork here. You can see the Millennium Falcon there blowing up the uh, reactor core of the Death Star. Uh, more drawings from the design. And then you begin your build. This is a humongous set. Uh, there are quite a lot of steps. There are six. I'm not exactly sure how many hours it took me. But I did build it over the course of, what, about a week and a half? Yeah. Probably. So it did take me quite a while. I only built, like, a few bags a day or a few bags a night. Um, I don't think there's anything in the back, but it is about 462 pages long. So in the back of the book, it does give you some more images of the set, how you can swap out the satellite dishes from episode 4 to episode 7. Um, it shows you the cockpit. It also shows you how to carry this set. Now, one thing that we will discuss in just a minute is it is kind of flimsy. It's it's a little bit fragile yeah. um, with the size of it and how heavy it is. This thing um, in the box, I don't know how much the set weighs, but the box and everything uh, with the set weighed about 33 pounds. Um, so it is very bulky and heavy. Uh, so you do need to be really careful when you are moving this set. And on the back of the book, it just gives you this other image of the Millennium Falcon, which is kind of like a logo. And that looks pretty cool. Again, a little bit of damage is sustained in the... Uh, delivery process, but uh, not too big of a deal, I guess. Let's check out the set. And here it is, the UCS Millennium Falcon, finally finished. So there's just a world of detail on this ship, and I don't know that we're going to be able to cover even close to everything. Yeah. Um, because it is a lot. But first, we're going to check out the minifigs. So over here, you can see these are the minifigs that it comes with. Uh, first up, we have a BB-8. Now, I don't think any of these at this point are exclusive, except maybe... These two. Yeah, Leia. I think the Han Solo and Leia, because they have that mask on their face, I think are exclusive. But the rest of them, I think you can find in other sets. So, uh, kind of a bummer that there weren't more exclusive minifigs in this set. And um, there is at least one or two that are missing, in my opinion. But we'll take a look at them individually. Here you have BB-8. Um, like I said, same one that we've seen in other sets, but still pretty cool. Um, we have this Chewbacca, which comes with a large headpiece that goes up over the top. He has the crossbow, nice printing on the chest and legs. Really a good minifig, but nothing new. Um, here you have Finn. Oops. Here you have Finn, where he is wearing the uh, little jacket. Um, he has the large blaster printing on the front and back. Um, nothing special, but cool anyways. Uh, here you have the old Han Solo from episode seven. He has the printing on the front and back. He's got the little blaster. Uh, he's got the gray hair because he's older. And uh, yeah, not bad, printing on the legs as well. Uh, it comes with a couple of porgs. Uh, just little easy built porgs. I do believe you build porgs in other sets at this point as well. Uh, but it does come with two of them. Uh, it comes with a C-3PO, which looks nice. He's got the printing on the front, back, and legs. Uh, not a bad minifig. Um, then you have Rey. So this is like the Episode 7 Rey, I do believe. Um, she's got the getup that she wears in the movie. She has that hairstyle that you do see in Episode 7. Uh, printing on the front, back, and legs. Nice minifig. Uh, then you got Young Hong Solo. He does have the double-sided face. So he's got the face without the mask and then the face with the mask. You wear the mask when they disembark the ship, uh, when they're inside of the large uh, space worm. So they're wearing the mask in that section of the movie. Uh, but yeah, he's a good minifigure. I do think that's exclusive with that face. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe it is. Then you have the Hoth-style Leia, where she's wearing the mask as well. Um, she does come with the other side of the other side of the face, which is not wearing the mask, but that is a good minifigure as well. It's got printing on the front, back, and legs. And then last but not least, this is not a minifigure, but it is a cool other uh, accessory that it comes with. It is the Minoc, um, which attaches to the ship, and we do see that um, when they're inside of that space worm as well. So it can attach to any part of the ship, and it just comes with one of those, even though you do see quite a few of them in the movie. Um, the other accessory that it comes with is going to be this 
uh, Satellite Dish. This is the episode seven Satellite Dish, uh, where this one is the one from the original trilogy. Uh, so you can swap those out, depending on what look you're trying to go for, whether it's episode seven or episode four through six. All right, checking out the set. Like I say, there's just a ton of detail. I don't think we're gonna cover it all in this video, uh, but you know, you gotta kinda own this and see it in person for yourself to really appreciate everything that goes into it. There's just greebling and detail all over this thing. Um, just give you a good overview. There's all these different air vents on top. Um, there's the turret gun right here. There's a similar one on the bottom. It does have a large cockpit, which is actually quite a bit bigger and more spacious than the ones that we see on previous renditions of the Millennium Falcon. Um, this does just pull off like that. Inside the cockpit, you can fit several minifigures. So there are a couple of different rows um, where you can place the minifigures, which is nice. Uh, lots of control panels in there. A um, few little details. It could be more detailed than it is um, with a yeah. set this large, but it is larger than we've seen before, and it is... It does look nice at the end of the day. Um, it does include the hallway that goes from the cockpit into the middle of the ship. That is not accessible on the inside, unfortunately. Uh, with this set being so large, the, the amount that they were able to put on the inside of the ship, like play features, is very, very limited, which is unfortunate. Uh, it'd be nice to have more play features. With, with just how big it is, I think the more that you include on the inside, it just makes it more fragile on the outside. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look at the interior space here in just a second. Um, on the back of the ship, it does have the large thrusters, the engines on the back, which are cool. It's a few different rows of that blue tubing that comes with the other ships. Um, so I think that looks really nice. Um, again, it has these large vent covers. One thing I do really like about it is it's very detailed on the top, but it's also detailed on the bottom. So there are some huge landing gear on the bottom. Um, it does have some details and greebling and features on the bottom as well. Uh, where previous renditions did not have anything on the bottom. They look very unfinished. Um, this one does have some details on the bottom. Even though you're really not going to see the bottom of this one much, because this is not a set you're going to pick up and play with. Yeah. That is for sure. Um, so swapping out the satellite dish is actually pretty easy. Uh, you just pop it off like so. And then the other one can just go right on top like that. Um, so yeah, I'll just set it on there because we're going to sw swap it back out. The turret gun does move in several different directions, so it can go side to side, up and down, all over the place, which is really cool. Um, um, now to show you the internal features, so there's two different spots where you can pull this apart and play with it on the inside. Um, one of them is going to be right here. So first of all, you remove the satellite dish, which we've already done, and then there's this little piece right here that you can grab onto, lift out, and then there's this piece right here that just pops out as well. And in here you have the main area from the movie. Uh, where they have the hollow chess game, they have the seating, uh, just lots of little details, uh, some grading on the floor. There's this cool little seat that someone can sit in uh, with lots of control features and computers there. Um, it also has a sticker on the wall, which you can barely see because it's kind of dark. Uh, but there is like a sticker there that gives you the illusion of a hallway. I wish I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, it, it makes it look like you're on the inside of the ship, even though the internal space is very limited. Um, the other spot that you can open up and play with is going to be back here. Okay, so you just pull this one up right here. And then this one pops out kind of the same way that the other one did. Uh, but this is just more internal space. So back here you have the hyperdrive, I do believe. Um, a couple more hallway looking uh, stickers there. Um, there's also in the floor a little spot. I believe this is where they hide out underneath the floorboards in episode 7 maybe. Uh, but this little piece just goes on top to cover that up. Um, and then it does have these little compartments as well that open up with a little bit of space. You could put something in if you wanted to, uh, but I think it just gives you some really good added detail. And then another fake hallway right there as well. And then you have the ladder that I believe goes up to the turret. So lots of cool little features, but not a whole lot of space. You just have those two sections yeah. that come apart that you can play with, uh, but they are pretty cool nonetheless. All right, one other feature is there's a gun that pops down on the bottom. Jackson's going to show us. You just push a little lever, and then that gun pops down. It's kind of cool. I actually didn't know that was there until today. <laughs> uh, so you have that gun that pops down. Back behind it, you do have the uh, turret gun, which is very similar to the one that you see on top. You can kind of see it there in the distance. And then the other feature it has is this right here comes down where they can load the ship. So we do see several times in the movies where that comes down and they're able to get on the ship. There's nothing really up there. Um, I can't really get my camera up into there. Uh, not really any space, just kind of a hollow area right here. Um, but that is kind of a cool feature that they included as well. All right, so the UCS Millennium Falcon. Jackson, what are some things that you like about this set? I 
I mean, um, I really like all of the detail, like on the top and the greedling. Mm -hmm. Um, I I mean, I've only seen episode nine, eight, one, and two. Right. And but, um, I feel like from eight and nine, I feel like this looks um much like the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, the, the detail they absolutely nailed. Like it's very very cool. Uh, I mean, over 7,000 pieces, they were able to really get all the detail and all of the uh, features of the surface of the ship. Um, obviously, this is a display piece. It's not a play set. This is one that you're going to put on the shelf and display. We actually we actually bought a stand that we're going to be putting it on here soon. We'll do a follow-up once we do that and show it to you. Um, I'm anxious to see what it looks like on that stand. One other thing that we didn't mention was that this does open up. Um, and there is a seat in there with like a little uh, controller so you can control the turret. So I want to make sure we mention that, but we didn't get a close up view of it. Uh, Jackson, is this one that you're going to buy? You're going to wait for a sale or you're going to pass? So buy it. You're going to buy it. This one retails for $799. It has been available for a few years. I'd imagine it's going to retire probably in the next year or two. Yeah. Um, it's been a very good seller for Lego, so I don't think they're anxious to uh, retire anytime soon. Um, but we actually got this one for $100 off plus free shipping at Zavvi.com. That's Z-A-V-V-I.com. Um, no affiliation with them, but they did have a sale on this one, and that was the best price I've ever seen on it. Uh, so check out that site and keep an eye on it. I actually got an email telling me that it was $100 off, and it, that was just too good to pass up. I've been waiting for this set and watching it for so long. Um, finally decided to take the plunge once I saw that sale. Um, but yeah, it's one that we're definitely going to recommend. I would say buy it for sure, but yeah. then I will. But then I waited for a sale myself. <laughs> so if you can get it on sale, definitely get it. But this is one that you're going to want to jump on before it retires because once it's gone, the price is going to just shoot way, way up. Obviously, when you compare it with the uh, Millennium Falcon from Episode Nine, it doesn't even compare. Like, look at how look at how bitty this is. <laughs> it's so tiny. Uh, yeah. Obviously, this is a very good set. When it came out, I thought it was super awesome, but. Uh, when you compare the two, it's just, it's not even close. Like the amount of detail, the size, everything is just so much better on this uh, UCS set. But yeah, there you can kind of see the size comparison quite a bit smaller. All right, so there it is, the UCS Millennium Falcon. Do you have it? Do you want it? What do you think of it? Comment down below. As always, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, keep on building.